Hello everybody, welcome to Monarch Intuition and tonight I'm going to be doing a different type of tarot reading. So this is going to be kind of like a recap of everything. So what is weird about all these different tarot readings is that I've been pulling the devil in a lot of my readings. Like a lot of readings started out with the devil, okay? And I felt like we should look into that energy. Now, another thing, I even said it in the Pisces reading. I called it out. I was like, you know, I've seen the devil a thousand times. I hope it doesn't come up for you. First card was the devil. So go and watch that reading so you know that I'm not BSing you. Um, so when we look at the devil, it represents taboo topics. It can represent contracts. It can represent um, disorders, being addicted to things. However, a lot of people don't quite understand what the devil is itself. So we're going to talk about that in detail. So I'm going to start out with just, I'm going to do a normal tarot reading and see if the devil pops out in this reading, okay? All right, we have the priestess. All right, so I kind of feel like this is something that I need to talk about. So the high priestess is coming out. So instead of pulling that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the devil out of this deck. And we're going to talk about it together. So the high priestess is letting me know that I'm supposed to talk to you about this. Now I'm going to apologize for the um, Capricorn and the Sagittarius reading. I did not do a good job on those readings. Those readings were very um, just everywhere. They're very scattered. So I'm hoping to just kind of bring everything that happened in all those readings into one reading. So here's the thing. A theme that was coming out for everyone was that in magic, there is the light path and then there is the shadow path. Okay. So within light and shadow, they both work in harmony with one another. One is not necessarily evil and one is not necessarily good. One represents nothing in infinity and one represents matter in something solid. So think of space, okay? Space is a void and then you have matter that exists in space. So there is a negative and then there is a positive, right? And as we expand, things are going to happen, you know, stars are going to explode, planets are going to crash into one another. And then eventually everything should potentially, they say, it's either going to expand infinitely or it's going to crush in on itself and then become nothing again. So in general, within our lives, there is always going to be that duality of negative and there's going to be that positive. And that's what the high priestess represents. But it also represents that yin and yang energy, how there can never be com something completely positive and then there can never be something that is completely negative, okay? So for example, if you are going to practice, I said this before in the other readings, if you're gonna practice black magic, take every precaution available to you. And I mentioned this before as well, that if you're going to play with virus, think of like magic as a virus, all right? If you're gonna play with a very deadly virus, what do you have to do? Well, you have to put on a hazmat suit, you have to put on an oxygen mask, you have to get disinfected, you have to go into a really cold room, you have to use instruments to pick up that, you know, that virus, you have to mess around with the virus. When you leave, you put everything, well, everything is put back the way it was. You leave the room, you get disinfected, you take off everything, then you take a shower and then you're like, leave, right? So that's what I'm seeing for you. You have to understand that black magic has a lot of rituals behind it. You can use it, however, there is a lot of red tape and therefore certain things should not be done. If you cannot do it properly, if you cannot perform it properly, then you should not do it. Same thing with light magic. There has to be that element of risk and reward. So what I'm seeing for you <clears throat> is that there are a lot of things that are taboo when it comes to magic. So for example, necromancy. Necromancy is a very taboo subject. Sex magic, tantra magic, whatever you want to call it. Very taboo. However, I'm not sure why the devil keeps coming out. So we're going to look at this energy. Actually, I'm going to pull three cards from the Revelations Tarot. I'm going to use this as a regular reading, right? It represents you being chained to the devil, but you can easily take off the chains. It's like once you learn something about the devil, you should take it off and understand that you have it, but not be chained to the situation anymore, okay? So if you do something involving magic, you need to cleanse yourself of that energy and take what you learned and move on with your life, but not keep it, okay? So for example, a lot of people do drugs because they want to experience something out there. They hear other people talk about it and they want to do it, but eventually... It can lead to something that's very bad for you, right? So I'm going to pull three cards from this. We have the High Priestess in Reverse. So that's the polarity between this. We have the Knight of Pentacles upright and we have the Ace of Cups upright. So there's the positive High Priestess and then there's the negative High Priestess, but they're both the same card, okay? So you can't have one without the other, understand that. I said that before the Vatican Church, 
has angels on its walls and it has demons on its walls. It has those neutral beings like gargoyles, which are like protectors. These popes, these clergy members, whatever, there is an element of dark magic behind it, okay? There is an element of light magic behind it. But they have all types of grimoires at the bottom of the Vatican right here. So, what else is going on? Let's clarify this high priestess in reverse. Why is the high priestess in reverse right now? We have the sun. We have the ten of wands. <clears throat> Here's the thing, a lot of people want to ask for the goodness in life, okay? They ask God to put them on the right path, but here's the thing about being put on the right path. It comes with a lot of setbacks because what you have to remember is that if you get put off of your path within your life, it's going to take a lot of time to recalibrate you to where you were before, all right? There are going to be a lot of setbacks, there are going to be a lot of bad things that happen, it's going to trip you up a lot, and it's going to put you back at square one. And every time you try to do something, you're going to kind of take, take two steps forward, one step back. Or sometimes two steps forward and three steps back. It's to recalibrate your system. And you're starting to say, this is too much. In order to attain enlightenment right here, it's becoming too much of a burden. So I want to cheat this examination. I want to mess around with something that is going to help me get to where I want to be. But here's the thing about that. It's not meant to necessarily help you when you perform black magic. It is supposed to help other things that are around you, okay? Knowing how to do something is not bad. It's using it in a negative way. The Knight of Pentacles, Five of Cups with the Ten of Pentacles. You have to understand that when you learn something, you can't have it. I said this before in another reading. It's kind of like Willy Wonka. Like, he gave Charlie the everlasting gobstopper. It was supposed to be, you know, his gift, right? And he could have sold that to Slugworth and, you know, sold off Willy Wonka's secrets, whatever. But that wasn't the story. That wasn't the actual story. He was sad because he made a mistake, but everyone has mistakes. But he realized he wasn't going to make a secondary mistake behind that. So he gave him back the gobstopper and he walked away, right? And he won in the end. However, what he won was not exactly just the chocolate factory. The chocolate factory was actually just like BS. He won outer space. He got taught the secrets of an interdimensional space being because that's what the great glass ele elevator is about. It's about, it's very rooted in Masonic society. I've talked about this before, but it's really rooted within the concept and the idea of what God is. God is a grand architect. Okay, that's what masons are. They are architects. They build things out of stone, out of stone masonry. That is what they do. So if they are the grand architects, what does that mean? Or if God is the grand architects, it means that in the Bible, it says you will become like God. And uh, Jesus said that to the Jews when they were saying that um, they were persecuting him for calling himself the son of Christ, right? Remember, tarot is heavily based in Catholicism. So this is why I'm talking about it like this. It's saying that you can understand something, but you cannot use it. You have to give it back. It's only allowing you to borrow something, to look at it, to peer through it, hands on, and then return it to where it was. You're not meant to keep anything from the devil, okay? You're not meant to keep certain aspects of things. It's meant to teach you something. If you have to perform it, you can, but you cannot always hold on to it. It's meant to help move people along because at the end, he gave up the situation and what did he get? He got taught by a grand architect what space was. They traveled in space in the great class elevator. You realize Willy Wonka is like some type of interdimensional alien. The concept of God, that's what he was. So... Some people will put that gobstopper, the everlasting gobstopper, in their back pocket. And, you know, like Baruka, she dropped down into hell. She was in hell everlasting. Some people will hold on to it forever. Or they'll try to sell off their secrets or they'll try to do whatever. But here's the thing. It was never yours to have. The Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups represents by you turning something down... And walking away with what you know, it actually helps build your build your life up. For example, a lot of people get involved in necromancy 
or they get involved in darker magics, but they don't know how to pull themselves out of it. They get deceived. And one of the things about, for example, chaos magic is that you are not supposed to use it. Like it even says so. Some of the great priests of chaos magic have said, don't use it because it very rarely ends up in good, positive, constructive ways for the conjurer. It usually ends in disaster. Sometimes you have to take the disaster in order to fulfill something if you need to, but understand that that is how it goes. It goes from order. You put your own thought into this order and it all falls apart. Okay, that was the whole point of what heaven is. The whole point of heaven is to have an orderly society. God, being the creator of heaven, right, has all of his angels. And you have to understand angels don't have free will. They are just beings that God has created. He has not breathed his breath of life into them. He has just simply created them. And they are his tools and his instruments. Now, some angels rebelled because they wanted to be like God. However, it even says that they cannot be like God because they were not breathed the breath of life. That is why demons hate humans. That is why Satan hated Adam and Eve because it said that God crafted them out of clay, and then put his life into them. He breathed the breath of life. So he breathed his essence to bring them alive. Now I'm talking about mythology right here. Whatever you believe, I don't... I'm just speaking what the cards are, okay? It's based in Catholicism. It's based in Judaism. So a lot of people don't quite want to read cards from their initial perspective of what they're supposed to be. I don't like doing that. So you have to understand it from the biblical aspect because that is how they took the symbology of these cards. I'm actually gonna pull a couple of cards. Not very good with this deck, never mind. I'm not gonna do that. I'm very terrible with that deck actually. With this Ace of Cups, this is what the initial artwork would have looked like in the um, 14, 1400s, 1500s, like very, very archaic. Very Italian style, 15, 1400s look to them. So it's heavily steeped within Catholicism. Ace of Cups, let's look at this. The Seven of Swords and the Eight of Pentacles. You have to understand that you can't run off with it. You can learn how to make it. For example, if it was a real thing, right? You could not take it and try to sell it to someone else. In fact, wouldn't it be better to just give it back? Hopefully something good will happen and then you learn how to create it because that's what the Eight of Pentacles is. It is the grand architect. He is a mason. He is building something, right? That is what the G and the A stands for. And even masons understand the whole point of America was that so people could practice religion peacefully and freely, whatever they wanted. Because you have to think, during these time periods in Britain, people were getting like really fucked up by practicing certain religions that didn't coincide with the church itself. Some of them were Buddhists, some of the founding fathers, some of them were Satanists, some of them were Christian, some of them were atheists. That was the whole point of the blending of the high priestess, is to bring it all together into one thing. To understand of harmony that they all have to be blended. Doesn't matter how you attain enlightenment. It's that you are enlightened. Okay? That's what the devil is trying to say. Is that there are a lot of things that you can get from the devil. But you always have to give it back. The Page of Cups. The Six of Swords. This is actually handing it back. You get your cup filled up. And then you move away from it. So this is like being intellectually filled up. You will have some sort of knowledge that you are being blessed with. You have to intellectually have the knowledge and then build it yourself. You can't just take what other people have built and use it for your own gain. You have to start at square one. For example, if you're gonna study necromancy, you can't just take the grimoire of this great magician, go to the page back where it says how to summon a legion of the undead and then do that. No, you have to start at Necromancy 101, I don't know what that book would be for you, but I mean, there are aspects within divination that involve necromancy. There are aspects in science that involve necromancy because it just means dead magic, dead rebirth. You can't jump ahead. You have to start at point one. So I feel like there are a lot of people who want to do stuff, but they're enticed by 
the ending of something. They don't ever want to fully learn what they're supposed to learn here. So I think a lot of people out there are trying to perform spell work, but they don't understand the basics, the roots. You don't under, some of you don't even understand the concept of what meditation is. Some of you don't even understand the most basic protection spell that you can put on yourself. Some of you don't even understand what white light protection energy is. Or even in, um, let's look at, and on a more physical side, some of you don't even understand how to eat properly or find the proper water or how to take care of your own body. Some of these rituals and incantations say, you have to be fasting for 20 days. You cannot have this. You cannot have that. It, it offends this spirit. It offends that spirit. So what are you going to do? You're just going to show up after eating Taco Bell and drinking a Baja Blast and be like, hey, Baphomet, let me talk to you. Like, that's not how the fuck this works. You have to show some sort of like, dedication okay i know it's appealing and i know it looks enlightening and intriguing but you have to understand that this is work all right this is not something that's just fun and whatever no you have to know the meaning you have to know the deep in-depth concepts of magic in order to perform it just because you want to walk around with a pentagram on you saying like satan is my daddy don't like you have to educate yourself deeper than that i was like that when i was younger however I was studying still. I was still reading the books. Yes, I like the aesthetics to it, but I had a lot of books on the matter. Even nowadays, I still kind of dress in like a little bit of an edgy style, whatever, but I still have books upon books. And I never really, like, I like studying it, but I never really did it because I was like, oh, I don't have 10 gold candlesticks, so I can't do that. Oh, I'm not at in East Asia on January 3rd during the full moon and the sign of whatever. No, so I'm not going to do that. Like, you have to understand there are levels and rules to things. You have to follow things by the book. The Ten of Cups. If you want some sort of fulfillment right here, if you want your spellcraft to work, to actually exceed your expectations, following the rules. Nine of Pentacles. It's not easy. In order to have the Nine of Pentacles, it's very hard. It requires a lot of work and dedication. It goes from the Eight, the Nine, and the Ten. We have Eight of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Ten of Pentacles. A lot of people will try to, you know, worship this, worship that, study this, study that. And it's like, if you're not going to do it all the way through, then don't do it at all. If you are not going to do the whole form of protecting yourself to speak to spirits, don't do it at all. Even if it looks enticing, even if it looks scary, because what you do is you open up a channel to yourself that you cannot unbind. When you open yourself up to certain negative entities, you cannot undo that. That's the problem and that's why people's lives turn to shit. So, for example, Movies that involve magic are actually very dangerous, okay? That's why my parents never let me watch the Harry Potter movies growing up because by even saying certain Latin words and certain Latin chants and incantations, that can open you up to certain things. So I'm not saying to not do something. I'm saying to do it properly, to understand that they're not just words, to understand that this ritual is not just a ritual, to understand that that book is not just a book, all right? If you don't want to open up something into your life, then don't pick it up. If you're not going to read it and see what it's actually about and then be like, hmm, that's scary, that's interesting, but I'm not going to do it, don't do it. Like if you don't have the proper tools, the proper training. The Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles is understanding that you have to start at square one, okay? It's not the Two of Pentacles, you're a little bit more advanced. People are starting to see that you have some sort of skills here, okay? And they're wanting to pay you for your skills. However, you're still practicing. You might not be the best, but you're very good at what you do. You're very skilled at what you do. The five of pentacles represents some sort of poverty, though. So don't rush the situation. The ace of cups. Understanding that also you have to take the bad with the good and the good with the bad. If you do some work and something bad happens, then like you receive something in return. Like that's the laws of equivalent exchange. Something bad, something good. The Ace of Pentacles coming out twice. The Magician over both of these. As above and so below. Okay? 
Let's look at the magician. He has a sign of infinity on his head, representing that he is not a human being. He represents being a divine being. He's doing the as above and so below. As it is on earth, as it is in heaven, or heaven or hell, however you want to view it, or earth and heaven, or earth and hell. He has all four elements. He has earth, water, fire, and air. He's growing this garden underneath him, representing that he is bringing something about, bringing something to life. You can never fully understand and grasp the concept of a magician because he's not meant to be a person. He is meant to represent an idea of something, an interdimensional being, which is kind of like what we talked about already, who is capable of performing every single type of magic that there is. Because ultimately, this is kind of like what the idea of the grand architect is. On a grand spiritual level, when you die, you could become an architect and be under God and he's going to teach you his secrets. That's the whole point of that, right? However, you still, even on earth, have to understand the basics, the roots of things. And it could also be a chasing after the wind. Like maybe it's sometimes fruitless. Like if you're going to get the secrets in the end, then what do you care about? Some people feel that way. Well, if I'm going to get the secrets in the end and I'm a good person, well, sometimes people have to understand that there are multiple ways to enlightenment. You can't just call yourself a good person and someone else a bad person because you're both on your own path. King of Wands, the Hermit. Being enlightened right here. Being Some light is being shed upon you or... Some light is being given to you. You're being illuminated. Maybe a ghost is speaking through you. Maybe a ghost is talking to you right now. The Eight of Swords. Being trapped within your own ideas. Being trapped within your own mind right here. The Hierophant. One more card. Being trapped to the idea of the Hierophant with the King of Pentacles. Okay. Some illumination is being shown to you or you're being used to illuminate something. What you are illuminating is the idea that people are chained to the Hierophant for money. So people are chained to the church for money, okay? The church scares people so that way they flock them in and then people hand them money, okay? I'm not talking about just everyday churches. Like there are some small churches, but then you have the giant mega churches, and then you have the Vatican. Then you have the Vatican, which is truly evil. Then you have, you know, large religious things. I'm not going to just point fingers at the Vatican. It could be mosques. It could be, um, what, what the hell are they? Temples in Asia. It could be uh, synagogues. Whatever it is, any type of this organized large thing, it's meant to keep people chained to it so they don't do it, okay? Because they're afraid that people will use things that they're not supposed to use because it looks enticing. So ultimately it is in a way to keep people safe, but at the same time, knowing the knowledge is not going to hurt you. It's performing it that will hurt you. Now, that's the problem is that people will generally perform it if it's available to them. But on the other hand, sometimes people won't. It's kind of like the war on drugs. Like some people are going to do it regardless. Some people won't. Like I'm not going to, like if they make crack legal, I'm not going to fucking smoke it. Like that's me though. But some people will. But at the same time, the Hierophant is holding the knowledge at the bottom of light and shadow, of good and evil, of negative and positive, okay? To keep people chained in this one ideology. But at the end of the day, the King of Pentacles is still sitting on his throne. So it is kind of hip hypocritical because people don't practice what they preach, regardless of their religion, all right? People are not practicing the idea of what they preach right here. The Queen of Swords to the Knight of Wands. In fact, this Queen of Swords is telling this Knight of Wands what to do. The Queen of Swords is very calculated in how she does things. And she tells the knight to carry out her orders, to carry out her things. The knight of wands right here in this scenario is not a free individual. He's not a free thinking person. He is simply a knight being told by the queen what to do. And that is, you know, in every organization, people are told what to do, how to act, how to get people under control. It's a science. That's why the church controlled music during these time periods, because music magic it messes with people's minds. That's why the CIA uses it to make people go crazy. Certain harmonies, certain pitches, 
look up the idea of Lys. He was said to, um, he was in the Romantic period. I want to talk about this actually. So the classical period is actually broken down into four sections. There's the Baroque period, the classical period itself, the Romantic and the contemporary. Okay. So the Baroque period is where we have a lot of, um, this is where the harpsichord was really like coming, becoming popular. During this time period, a lot of things were written on the harpsichord. It helped bring out new melodies. It helped, it was a new instrument. It was the idea of the harp being turned sideways and you don't have to pluck the string, something will do it for you. Then you have the classical period, which is where classical music or the classical piano that we know now came from. So this one had dynamics to it. It could be soft, it could be loud, it could be sad, it could have all these different sounds to it because really the piano is a string percussion instrument. It's a fusion between two things. And um, so the harpsichord didn't have sound to it. The church knew this, and so they were very strict on how they played music. You couldn't talk about the devil. It couldn't be too sad. It couldn't be too happy. You couldn't use two different tones to make people feel something because people feel something when the music is inspired, all right? Like, look at any pop song that's just fucking generic. Are you really going to feel anything? But most people feel something from like Queen or Journey or the Eagles or Led Zeppelin, whatever. People feel something from that because it's using the theory of music. It's using scales, cadences, arpeggios, things that people don't understand nowadays. When we get further along, even um, mosques, they're not allowed to play music, right? Not mosques, but um, Muslims in certain countries, they're not allowed to have music because it messes with people's minds because once you control the mind, you control people. So I know I've talked about this before, but you have to understand that people are being put under orders with this Knight of Wands to do something, all right? To bring more people into this idea. You have the Knight of Pentacles, and some people are walking away to be happy with something else. Okay, I feel what it, I know what it is. I fucking know, I get the message now. All right, some of you feel confined to an initial religion that you were born into. Some people you don't like Catholicism, some people don't like Christianity, some people don't like Islam, uh, Hinduism, Taoism, whatever you feel like. It's too constrained, too confined, too stringent, whatever. So what are you doing? You're going out and looking for other religions or being like this um, Knight of Cups. Because here's the thing, you can't tame the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is someone who wants to know something. He's impulsive. He wants to know the secrets of things. This Knight of Cups is you walking away to get your cup filled up somewhere else. You have to understand that if you are new to witchcraft, don't just join Wicca and start casting spells because that's not how the fuck that works. Wicca, you have to do a lot of work. I'm not Wiccan, okay? I don't really know much about Wicca because that's not my practice. However, a lot of people go out and start getting pentagram tattoos and start doing all this stuff and being like, oh yeah, I'm a witch. No, you're not. You're being deceived right there. Yeah, the victory with the Nine of Wands. You're looking for victory from the Nine of Wands because you were maybe bruised, battered, beaten by the church because you didn't fall in line to a certain situation. You can overcome this though, but you cannot sit there and just play around with entities that you don't even know what they do, okay? You can't just say that I'm a Wiccan or you're whatever and not know the basics of Wicca and just start practicing. You can't say that you're a witch if you've never done the first rites and rituals and initiations. Do not go and seek things and try practicing them immediately. Actually do in-depth knowledge because as the Bible has said before and even in other religions, the negative entity is a deceiver. It's trying to bring you into it and it wants you chained. Don't open yourself up to things that you don't fully understand yet because you're sick of religion, okay? Six of Pentacles. You're looking for something. You're hoping that something will give you something. The Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is coming out again. You're hoping to overcome whatever this is this confined thing. I'm telling you this because some of you are going to want to leave and immediately rush into something and get bruised, battered, and beaten. Some of you are going to be like, ah, oh, fuck it. No, I, can, I know how to handle the devil. You know you don't. A lot of people, especially certain occultist readers out there, they think that they've fought with the devil before. They know that they think they have command of the, over the demons. I'm going to let you know something. No, you don't. Like, I, you know you don't. You do not have even command over the smallest of demons. Sometimes they will want to work with you. Sometimes they will want to help you. But you do not have command over them. Unless you have the seal, the sigil, the proper initiations. You've done the proper things. You don't. That's the deception. The judgment. Being called out of the grave right here. 
you're being called to a new life. You can overcome these things. I know I've done videos on how to break black magic curses and all that, especially when you're younger. Here's the thing about life. When you do these things, you'll always get a great reset within your life, call you to a new life where you can just get rid of everything and move forward with your life. You're no longer chained to those things, okay? That means that you don't go back into doing things. You have to be smarter about them. You have to actually put thought and research into what you're doing. Don't just start going out there claiming to be a Wiccan, putting tattoos on you and never actually performing something, never doing the cleansing rituals. It, it's, it's a slippery slope because at the same time, Wicca is a religion, all right? You don't just run from one religion into another fucking religion. You have to understand that yourself. You can't say, oh, well, that looks cool. I want to join Satanism. It's still a fucking religion. It has its own rules. There are still, within Satanic communities, within Wiccan communities, within necromancy communities, their own rituals, rules, initiations, okay? If you want to say that you want to worship Persades and Hephany, Persephone, Hephany, Persephone, you cannot just say, oh, well, I'm going to start practicing necromancy. No, you should probably go to Greece, go to where the Temple of Hades and Persephone was, talk to people who understand that, because there are people who studied, that know these things, ins and outs. There are still priests and priestesses to Hades and Persephone, okay? You don't just get to skip out on the easy stuff and jump straight to the hard stuff because you've changed religions. That is how you're fucking yourself over, some of you. The King of Cups. The Page of Swords. Oh, that card wants to come out. So what I'm seeing right here is that some of you just need to take a break. And in the right moment, you'll be called back into action. Okay? The King of Cups right here, he can fill up someone's cup. The Page of Swords is someone who's seeking knowledge. He wants to wield his thing, but at the same time, the King of Cups is like, sit down or you're going to get burned. You're going to have to go into this resting period. So that's what this situation is for you. I have not pulled the Devil card, so I guess this is the message that's supposed to be coming out. The Four of Cups is turning things down from the universe because now you realize, hey, it requires a lot of work to it. Okay, it's not easy. It's not something that's just fun to do. The Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles is you turning down an opportunity from the universe to learn something new. Don't think of it as like, oh gosh, it's the religion. No, think of it as learning something, okay? Think of, a lot of people don't want to read the Bible because they're like, oh, it has too many discrepancies. Okay, well, so does every book out there. All right, well, read it regardless. Read the Quran, read the Torah, read... Taoism books, read Sun Tzu's Art of War, I don't know, read the book. Even if you don't agree with it, see what it actually means, see the secrets, and it'll unlock more for you, okay? Talked about that before. So, no devil energy. You have freedom. Freedom from the Eight of Swords and home. This is funny, because right here, she's trapped inside of the cage, the bird cage. The home represents... You're becoming more at peace with who you are now. You can understand that you're starting to do small things within your home that are going to help you without your life, okay? The truth. You're going to get the truth right here. Here, As I said before, you can't just start a square 100. You have to start at square one. Some of you want to change your religion. Some of you are enticed by certain things. Some of you were saying, I want to do Wicca. I want to be a Satanist. I want to do this. That's not how it works. It still has rules. Every last one of them has a rule. They have high priests. They have priestesses. They have initiations they have rituals that you have to do you have to be inducted you have to have all these things i mean even in a church think of like what you don't like about a church and then apply it to that okay maybe the greed isn't there but apply that same thing oh the church says you can't do this the church says you can't do that yeah well you can't do that and that and that and that sometimes there is more freedom in like other religions but ultimately there are still rules Ground, unseen. Yeah, there are still things hidden in the ground. There are still things that are set in stone, okay? And unseen. There are unseen things because you're not looking at the situation. Before you jump into something, before you start practicing right here, before you change religions, before you're like, oh, I'm going to be a tarot reader, before you're going to do any of that, there are rules that are set in stone. There are rules in tarot that are set in stone. There are lots of rules that you have to follow, like... Something that most people don't realize is that when you use a Ouija board, you have to say goodbye to the spirit. It has to move back to goodbye. Otherwise, you left yourself open. Like, if you've ever used a Ouija board and you've left it open, you never say goodbye, that's a problem. Make it show a couple of witches' familiar cards.
you have cooperation and fragility. Understand that there are people who will cooperate with you. You can get people to help you with these things, but it's still very delicate. It's still very fragile. Any change of religion, anything that changes right here, you still have to understand that it's still fragile, all right? Let me get you a rune card. Jerba, harvest, reward, fruition, maturity, growth, spiritual meaning, right action, natural law. You know, I was really worried about doing this reading. I was like really, really, really scared to do this. I was like, I don't know if I should do this. It's kind of dark. I don't want to like call people out, but some of you need to know, I didn't pull the devil. Burkana, encourage ideas, aid, creative endeavors, nurture a project, and help with family. So I assume this is the message that was supposed to come out. I'm not quite 100% sure. I'm not going to say I'm like the greatest reader or anything like that because I'm not. I'm just trying to help people. Some people don't like my advice, whatever. Don't know what to tell you. Mummy, change. Spider, community and web weaving. Web weaving is like casting spells. You have to find people who know what they're doing in order to help you and aid you. All right. Now, some people out there are fucking lunatics and don't know what on earth. They don't... You, magic has to be grounded in reality. It has to take the idea of something from your mind and bring it into reality, okay? So let's talk about that, for example. I'm going to talk about some crazy people. I'm going to talk about people who... <sighs> magic in its essence, is a science, okay? Necromancy still is a science, all right? The idea of embalming people is necromancy, okay? In its core essence. The idea of stem cell regenerative therapy is necromancy in its essence. You are bringing something dead back to life or you are changing it into its death state like a mummy, that card right there, and putting it in the ground to preserve it for later because they wanted to preserve their bodies in hopes that one day they could bring them back to life. Some of them wanted to just preserve their bodies so that they were monuments and some of them just didn't want disease to spread, right? However, think about like cryogenics that are happening now. People are preserving their bodies in freezing temperature, freezing liquids to hopefully be, bra be brought back one day. That is necromancy, okay? You can put the scientific terms behind it, but remember, this is where it all stemmed from. Pharmakia means pharmacy, all right? Pharmakia is black magic occultic arts. What is pharmacy? The idea of medicine to help people or to hinder people. Psychology comes from the word psi in Greek, the letter psi. It's where you get the words of peering into people's minds, all right? Psychological medications, um, <clears throat> the psychotropic market. So that's what I'm seeing for you is that even when it comes to like refrigeration, someone was like, I'm tired of burying my food in the ground. I wish there was some way to keep my food inside the house. And they're like, well, I have to study X, Y, and Z in order to understand refrigeration, understand Freon in order to understand these things. How can I do this? So they brought it from their head into reality, okay? So magic, once again, is still a science regardless of how you want to look at it. Magic has evolved to where it's no longer called magic, but its roots are based in these things, okay? The root of psychology is based in Greek medicine, which was called pharmakia. Who ruled Greek medicine? Well, some sometimes it was, uh, well, it was Asclepius. It was a god, Asclepius. Then there was also, for people who ruled pharmakia, like the occult side of it, was Hecate. Hecate is based from the Greek or the Egyptian god Heka, which is magic, all right? So everything stems from this a magical root, a magical origin, and it still has all the rights and rules behind it. You have to start at point one. Just because you don't like the confined restrictions of, oh, the church, doesn't mean that you just get to go into Wicca and like, I'm gonna start talking to trees. That's not how it works. You, I'm not here to say, don't do it. I'm here to say, do it properly or you're gonna get burned, all right? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this reading. And um, hope it wasn't too harsh with you, but I'll talk to you later.